Hello everyone, welcome back to another Shonen Archive warning! No, we don't have to do this, thank god we're talking about Gintama, we're not talking about Jujutsu Kaisen! <laughs> 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 I was about to say, for some reason there's a faction of Jujutsu dudes who are just scowling through YouTube looking for the new Jujutsu Kaisen episode, and they keep thinking that Shonen Archive is those? And I'm just like, how, bro? I'm not trying to trick you. <laughs> I'm, it's literally in the show. Shonen <laughs> Archive, episode this, featuring Zenrado. In which case, why the fuck would I ever just release an episode raw featuring Zenrado? <laughs> raw with my commentary track? <laughs> <laughs> It's like, what are you doing, my guy? I understand it's, you want to... It's no subtitles, it's just me voicing all the characters. <laughs> it's you every once in a while going, oh man, that's fire. That's great. It's just me dubbing everyone in like a monotone-ass voice. Oh, I would, I would... Have you ever seen one of the ones for the hearing impaired? Where they describe in description about what's going on? <laughs> You're just doing that for... It's just me doing that. <sighs> Man, I, I kind of want to do that. Unfortunately, I would get immediately copyright strike. Point is, I'm not sacrificing my channel for you, but I am going to put our channel up to us talk about Shonen. So what is today? It's Shonen Archive time, everyone. Hello, I'm Wookie, and I'm here with Zenrado. Hello. And what's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. It is not an illegal way for you to watch anime on YouTube. But what it <laughs> is, is a show in which me and Zen dedicate ourselves to watching every single fanning Shonen Jump related uh, the big one being Gintama, and then also doing Jujutsu Kaisen, and um, I was about to call it Toriko's Basketball, and that would—that is the Koriko's. <laughs> Toriko's Basketball. Yeah, oh my god, Toriko's Basketball would actually kind of go hard if you think about it. It absolutely would go hard. One hundred percent, dunking a ball from across the earth. <laughs> It'd be yeah, insane. Yeah, throwing a shooting a basket from halfway across the planet. Ah, oh, damn it! All right, we'll talk to Sean Jump about this later. Talking about those. And we plan to do absolutely everything. The only reason we're not doing One Piece is because I'm almost positive Zen has not watched One Piece live action. I haven't. I actually do want to. I watched it. It was really good. I really liked it. There was yeah, I've heard it's really good. I'm just, I don't want to sit around and watch fucking... One Piece? Netflix. <laughs> oh, that's no, no, I, I, Yeah, I just don't want to get Netflix for what... I don't like One Piece enough to get Netflix for it. You know Fair I mean? enough. Like, but if you ever find it illegally, I would suggest watching it. It's re It's actually really well done. And it will come up again whenever we have to actually cover the live-action Gintama. And I'll be going like, hmm, how does this compare to the $180 million per episode budget of One Piece? <laughs> I'm not happy about this. The One Piece episode was... <laughs> Let me tell you, they made Barate Zen. They actually just made the fucking thing. Why couldn't they do the same for Elizabeth? It just doesn't make sense. <laughs> And we plan to do this until the end of time or the end of ourselves. And today we're going to be talking about Gintama episodes. Whoa, hold on to your butts for this one. It is episodes 154 to episode 159. I was not able to finish 160 in time, so I told Zen to stop uh, before and not watch 160. So we'll save that for, we'll add that episode in for next week when we do 160 through 165. It'll be six episodes. But for now, we'll be doing episodes 155, 156, uh, 157, 158, and 159. And let's get right into it. I'm going to start with going to one episode 154. I'll handle the first two episodes here because I watched them most recently and Zen watched them almost a month ago. So It's been a, it's been a minute. <laughs> it has been a minute. So let's go into it. And first, let me quickly mark down. Okay, three... I have to always do this so I can remember for the chapters. I don't know if anyone uses the chapters, but know that I have to do this and kind of guesstimate where I think, counting in the theme song beginning, <laughs> where I think the actual conversation for us starts. <laughs> All right. So episode 154, we get the conclusion to Kintoki, which uh, previously on Kintoki, we saw that um, Shinpachi Butchin was going to get a surgery to remove his Butchin. Uh, because it was holding him back from being the top host that he was going to be. So we see the aftermath of the surgery there. And um, I'm going to pause because one of my fucking workers is calling me before work. What are you doing? <laughs> one uh, work crisis averted. So let's get back into it. I, in case you were wondering, hey, I'm not lying about how hard it is to record shut an archive with my work schedule <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> It is tough out here. Okay. 
So, episode 154, as I said before, Kentucky Butt Chin, he has a surgery, and the surgery, it reveals that his butt chin has been replaced with a penis chin, so now it's the front, it's no longer the back, and they leave it off there, who knows, they said that's the final, so maybe that's the end of Kentucky, who knows if we'll ever see <laughs> Shimpachi Butt Chin and Kentucky again, but we'll see. Uh, episode 154, so, Tojo is holding a surprise birthday party for QB. And he has invited a whole bunch of people. Ote and Shimpachi have a special, like a, a cake made specifically for QB on her birthday. So they start going up to there. And when they get there, when they get close to the residence, uh, that's when Tojo comes in and warns them about, hey, don't use the front. I'm really planning this out so that it's a surprise for her. Or for the master, I should say, specifically, because that's what he calls her. Um... So they're going to throw a giant surprise party and it turns out that a whole bunch of celebrity guests are there and everyone's like, um, it's like a really fancy place that they never would, they never expected it to be this fancy for a birthday party. So they're not really dressed for it. They're very clearly commoners, but he says, it's okay. As long as you just follow the script and everything will be fine and there'll be no issues here. Um, Shim- and so he goes off to make sure that the the party is still going fine and Shimpachi starts to worry because he's like Kint- but this is a very fancy place and we can't screw around Gintoki's main action is to screw around so what are we going to do and Ote says like hey have faith Gintoki will behave well and we see him at a table he's sitting there with Katsura Hasegawa and the shell of the of the kami the, the, the dude whose wife died and turned into a skeleton <laughs> His shell is there. Uh, they're very serious, and it looks like they're actually behaving themselves, and it's revealed that they are actually playing the board game, which is life, and Hasegawa has just won, because he is a celebrity rock star, and he says that basically, I've won the game of life. This starts an argument about with Katsura, because Katsura takes this extremely serious, and he, <laughs> he does like this scream, which is hilarious, because you can tell the voice actor is like uh, putting his all into it, and it's amazing. Um... And they start an argument saying, like, whatever, you may be winning at life, but you're actually failing in life. And Hasegawa says, like, whatever, what about you guys? You're both failing at life and in the game. That makes you worse than me. <laughs> uh, Shinfachi is angry about this, and he immediately flips the table. Hasegawa is bummed because he just lost the only thing that he's ever won in his entire life. Um, and Shinpachi yells at them and says, like, you have to not draw attention. And Gintoki says, no, 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 let me tell you, we're professionals at the birthday uh going to a birthday party um because you see when you're at a birthday you have to play a board game in order to make it so that you know everyone wants to play the nintendo but you can't play the nintendo you have to play a board game so that it's shown to the mother that you're having a great time and you're also having a wholesome time so that later on that person can then go on to get a nintendo game later like rbi baseball that's what uh, Katra's ideal planning here is, that this is the way it goes. And also, while they're showing this, it's it looks clearly like they're all in elementary school. And basically, he says, you don't have to worry about it. We three are we're birthday fighters. We, we keep the peace. We keep it calm. And we get it so that we're always invited to every birthday party. Because every birthday party that we go to, we bring the good vibes. And everything's good. Um, and he still kind of berates them and says, you guys need to calm down and be good and that's when he notices that there's a yellow tent in front of the food table uh kagura is there camping out as she's ready to get the food as soon as the line goes and she f- starts fighting back saying that she needs to stay in line because there's too many people and she's not going to get the specific uh egg roll not egg rolls but sushi rolls that she wants um and they start fighting back and they see that they're causing such a commotion that actually one of the celebrities shinosuke ogori uh, thinks sir, food is about to be served and he gets himself embarrassed because he's about to act exactly like Kagura and start waiting in line for the food. Uh, this guy comes up later on, funny enough. And eventually, um, a QB arrives to the party. The party starts off and everyone's like, yay. And they start, they sing happy birthday to her. And Shimpachi sings it in the shittiest way possible that gets the ire of absolutely ever. He's like screaming it out, going, Happy birthday! <laughs> in complete English. <laughs> I remember that part was. <laughs> it is so funny. It just it, uh, it goes on for an uncomfortable amount of time. <laughs> 
So they scream it, and obviously everyone starts kind of going, whatever, they're, they're so shitty, these these common folk. Um, next, they see on the agenda, and they also start noticing that um, Tojo is giving them, <laughs> they say his eyes have opened, because he always has slanted eyes. So when they look at him, his eyes are completely open and fucking pissed off at them. <laughs> Um, the next part of the party is to give them the flowers, and so they start having a fight over who should give them the the flowers. Um, Katsura says that he's the only leader here, so he's gonna go do it. And then Kagura says that I'm the leader to leader, so therefore I'm the leader. Hasegawa then says, like, I'm the oldest, so I should go do it. So they fight, and then eventually a lot of the flowers end up being destroyed. So Kagura goes up there and gives a single flower to Kyuubi, which welts in her hand. Um, and then before they're able to eat, they have to go give out presents and Tay is very like, doesn't want to give her gift because hers is like a tiny cake and everyone's giving them like a fucking Mitsubishi and stuff. Like it's full on cars cause these are celebrities. And so Shinpachi says, you don't have, no, Kintoki says, you don't have to worry about it cause it's not about the price of the gift. It's about how much it cares about it. And you see that his prize was going to be a catalog. Um... So Shinpachi says, whatever, we can go up and get the cake. We at least know it's better than Gintoki's, so it's not going to matter. As they get up to go give the cake, a rich asshole pushes Tay on purpose so that the cake falls over and it breaks. Uh, Shinpachi doesn't take that shit and he says, like, hey, you're going to have to apologize to her because uh, you clearly did that on purpose. And that's when all the rich folks start to fight back against the poor folk and start asking for the poors to be kicked out, please. And Shinpachi says, uh, the the guy who is money says, like, whatever, as you can see here, you're in the wrong, not me. So you're going to be kicked out of here. He's like, I don't give a fuck. You're going to apologize before we do anything else. Um, at this point, the, the dude comes up and it looks like he's about to kick Shinpachi's group out. But instead, he says to the rich asshole that um, you're out of here. Basically, the only person that he invited to the party was QB's friends, and the rest of them kind of show up to bring in heirs, basically to get good in with the clan. And that's the only reason they're there. And he says, unfortunately for you, uh, the young master is not like his father. And because of that, he cares more about um, people than he, the friendship than he does money. So you're kind of screwed out on this. Uh, so he then kicks out a lot of the rich people who are being assholes, and then he tells Shinpachi that basically I wanted to, um, th- th- we're going to be fine, it's not going to be that bad, we basically needed to trim the hedges, because it was looking, re- our, our yard was looking really bad, and you just helped us get rid of a lot of annoying insects, and he goes like, oh okay, that's the way you wanted to do it, I guess you use us, but it's okay, it's cool. And then before he leaves, uh, QB basically says to him like, Hey, you can keep pretending that that's what you're trying to do, but I know that's not true, and you are going to have to deal with this with my father, <laughs> who is going to be very angry about what you just did. And you see that he's like, oh, shit, I am going to have to deal with that. But then she says, hey, but thank you, because I appreciate it, and I actually really like that you did that, so it's cool. Um, and then they actually start to have just a nice, simple birthday party, as all the friends are together, and they have a nice time, and we see that... The only people left over as they play a new game, a board game of life. Uh, everyone's enjoying it, and everyone's there, including the celebrity who was the only dude who did not say anything mean to them, which was Shinsuke Ogori. He's there hanging out with them at the end. Because <laughs> he was the only one that was actually kind of chill with everyone else and was cool. Um, <clears throat> who was apparently based off an actual real-ass person who is the... Uh, um. Uh, okay, yeah, apparently this guy wasn't in... I don't know who he is, but he is a celebrity on their side. I can't keep up with Japanese actors, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. I just don't know. If they're VAs, I have a better idea, but not actual actors. <laughs> but that's the episode. That's episode 154. Zen, go ahead and tell me what you feel about this one. I thought it was good. It was just kind of a cute little... What's the gang up to? These are characters you don't get to see that much, like Hubei yeah. and them. Uh, and it was just a nice little wholesome ending. I like when they're playing the board game at the end. Yeah, and Katsura. Cool. I forget which one has all the money. I forget if it's Gintoki that's holding all the money or if it's Katsura that's holding all the money. <laughs> but I think it's Katsura that's holding all the money and Gintoki's like attacking him. Yeah, I think that might, that is likely it. But yeah. it is very cute. And it's kind of nice to see QB again and to see how 
um, much friends QB actually has now. Because uh, as we saw previously, things were not going super great for QB. So um, it's nice to see that they're getting more accustomed to actually being like a normal person and stuff like that. And trying to be a little bit more out there. So yeah, very cute episode. Very nice yay friendship at the end here. And as always, I'm a big fan whenever rich people get fucked over. So <laughs> they had everything. Um... Yeah, and I thought it was pretty funny. It was very cute. I like that they were actually legitimately playing the board game Life, which is maybe the weird... Yeah. <laughs> it's really funny. Yeah, that was really good. Um, the cutback to this one actor guy as they keep going it, I don't know who he's supposed to be, but I don't know. There was something just inherently funny about them going like, holy shit, it's uh, Shinosuke. Oh my god, I can't believe he's here. He's a real celebrity. And then when they're doing this buffet, it's like, oh my god, Shinosuke, he's embarrassed. We're making him, we're a bad influence on him. <laughs> we're so bad. And then just to see at the end that he was actually just cool with all of them, it was pretty nice. And then another guy that shows up here, who's called Tamosan, he ends up showing up later in the next arc, with which is the Yatsu arc. So it was nice to kind of just see him here early on in the beginning and be like, oh yeah, he shows up later. But yeah, just a very cute episode. Very nice. And good times. Good vibes. So that's episode 154. Also, the title of it was called That Person Looks Different from the Usual During a Birthday Party. <laughs> there you go. Let's move on to the next episode. And the next one will be... First, let me put in this time. Uh, 16 and 30. There we go. And then we'll go to episode 150, uh, 155. Okay, the other side of the other side of the other side would be the other side. Okay, this one's pretty easy, but basically the... Um, I can't remember if this one starts with... That. Okay, no, the, the, the next episode starts with the, um, the Elizabeth short. Okay, so... Hasegawa has basically entered some kind of Madio spiral or a dork spiral, depending on how you want to call it. And he's had too many failures and he's looking to get out of it. A lot of this episode is actually just a flashback of a lot of the stuff about Hasegawa's life. Um, but also of previous episodes. So, Hasegawa are going off, and Hasegawa and Gintoki are off to the horse races to try their luck. Um... Kasugawa tries to teach Kentucky about how the specific rundown of how to pick a horse kind of goes down. Um, and that specific nature of it really annoys Kentucky because he's like, whatever, just pick pick a horse. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, in the end, they both lose their bets. And um, they keep trying and they keep losing. And around this time when they're lamenting all their losses, he realizes that his lifestyle actually started from when he met Kentucky. So we see a flashback of when he was um, had a job and he was almost like a completely different character to the Hasegawa that we know now. Um, and so they talk about his fall from grace into being a Mario and then um, he says that no matter what, his loving wife has always been there even though he's done so much. And so we see him give his wife the Hasegawa buster just one more time for good old time sakes. <laughs> And he says he has to keep trying to get out of it for her, and this is the reason why he wants to get better, is so that he can finally be reunited with his wife, and everything can be good again, and he needs to escape the spiral. Um, and then he tells Kentucky, you need to leave because I don't want to drag you with me, and then Kentucky says, no, we're both going through this, we're seeing this to the end together. So they both basically sell everything that they have until they're just in underwear, and they go to bet on their horses. Uh, oops, big giant. That's fine. Uh, they go to go bet on their horses. Um, Hasegawa, um, Hasegawa goes for I think just away. That's right. He goes for the horse. He his horse's yeah, name horse is named Just Away. Just Away, and so he starts screaming for Just Away to go do it. Um, he needs Just Away to win for our, for Hatsu's sake. And then it's revealed that Gintoki he starts <laughs> he starts uh, cheering for deep uh, for cheap impact, um, which is a parody of an actual horse called <laughs> Deep Impact. But he starts cheering for him, and this is where we learn that he's actually Gintoki realized that no matter what, Hasegawa would is always going going to fail because he is in a Madio spiral. 
<clears throat> so what he does is that he uses powers of the ideology of a main character who always wins. And and so he says that he picked the very first horse that Hasegawa said was not going to win. <laughs> and that's what he put everything on. <laughs> was the one he was 100% sure was going to lose. Because he says, no, that's the one that's going to end up winning. And so Just Away and uh, Cheap Impact start having a back and forth that goes uh, neck and neck. Uh, and then, as they guard neck and neck, it goes to a photo finish, and Just Away wins. Uh, and Hasegawa uh, starts going crazy. He goes like, "I did it!" He starts crying. I can finally be, um, my life is finally over. I'm out of the spiral. Gitoki, in a fit of rage, rips up his ticket for uh, Cheap Impact because uh, he's so angry that he loses again. Because he keeps losing every time he goes out with Hasegawa is what he said. He's tired of losing when he's next to Hasegawa. Because every time they go out together, they always lose. And just once, he just wants to win. And so with that, um, it's actually revealed that there was an incident. And Just Away was actually disqualified because they were out of bounds for a block. And such, Cheap Impact has actually won. And Gintoki goes like, oh man, he won. And he realizes that he ripped up the ticket, so there's no way for him to get the money. <clears throat> and he's also bummed out about this. And then Gintoki goes to look at Hasegawa. And we see that Hasegawa's glasses have been left behind. And along with that is a suicide note. And it is implied that Hasegawa kills himself. <laughs> and... <clears throat> As they end it, they do the full ED, and they end the episode. It literally goes from his picture up in the air saying, we will always remember you, and it cuts to the super happy ED that they have. <laughs> and at the end of the ED, they see that um, Hasegawa sneaks back into the horse racing place to get back his glasses, and as he leaves, he says, um... As he leaves, he says, uh, this is a gag anime, I can't die. And as he's leaving, he starts going like, these goddamn animators are so... The writers are so lazy that they can't actually think of a, of a fucking punchline, so they have me kill myself? What is wrong yeah, with them? He gets, like, pissed. <laughs> he gets actively pissed about, like, oh my god, this is unbelievable. <laughs> What's so funny about this? Oh my god. <laughs> the, late, the unfunny bastards can't think of a punchline, so they go to a dark, the darkest place imaginable. Uh, and the episode ends with... Uh, a, which is in a really, I, I really like the way this episode. So after he's done bitching, it goes to the next episode and in the next episode preview. Um, Gintoki asks the question that I have to ask here. Gintoki says, am I the only main character who bitches all the time? And I have to say, I have to actually wonder, is Gintoki actually the bitchiest MC in all of Shonen Jump? Uh, in terms of not actually being a bitch, I'm saying about just like bitching like and yeah, complaining all the time, like bitching nonstop. Ichigo complains a lot. Does he? Yeah, he's he's constantly like, God damn it. Like Ichigo's the straight man in Bleach, basically. Oh. Um, so everyone... <clears throat> so everyone... Uh, God damn, sorry, I got a message and I looked to check it and then my, my brain just blanked out. Okay. Uh, so one. everyone else gets to do, like, silly, funny stuff and he's the one that, like, reacts and is like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> so, uh, I would say he whines a lot. But he doesn't, he doesn't, like, bitch in the way that Gintoki bitches. Because Ichigo's bitching is like, we're in the middle of a life and death situation and you're being an idiot. Like, Gintoki's bitching is like, uh, <laughs> I have to walk. <laughs> I have to move. I have to do things. Unbelievable. Yeah, you're right. Okay, I can see that. I was thinking of maybe... See, because I think there's a difference between bitching and being angry. Because if it turns out actually just being legitimately angry, obviously Yusuke exists. And there's plenty yeah, of other... Yeah, well, Yusuke's bitching is like... Uh, my life fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and to be fair, Yusuke's life does kind of suck. It sucks. All his, Yusuke's life is terrible. It, it is actually a legitimately bad life. So you can understand where his bitching is coming from. And he's never, like, bitching about stuff where it's like, ah, uh, you know what? This parfait just isn't right. Like, there's just something wrong about it. You know, I don't think I can enjoy this. He would never say that. If he was eating a parfait, he'd be going like, ah, fuck yeah, parfait. Because <laughs> he doesn't even get to eat that much about it. Most of his bitching is like, whatever, my mom's out on the town. And it's like, damn, you just live a bad life, you scared. 
So yeah, I think I think Gintoki's right on this one. Until we get, experience some more, I think he actually is the one who bitches the most, just out of out of nowhere and out of necessity. Um, and yeah, that's the end of the episode. How'd you feel about this one, Zen? Uh, it was really funny. I really liked the suicide joke. I thought it was funny <laughs> uh, when Gintoki just looks over and it's just the glasses on top of the suicide note. I thought that was already funny. Uh, and then I thought it was also really funny when it's like post episode and it, he's like sneaking in the building in the dark when it's closed <laughs> and he's like, I didn't fucking kill myself. Fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was really good. That was really funny. Uh, I'm, I'm the same way. I'm, I'm a big fan of Hasegawa at this point. Any, almost any episode, even though the, a lot of this episode is him kind of looking back at his life and seeing where it all went wrong, that's still pretty funny when he's like, hey, I realized that a lot of my spiral began when I met you guys. And then Gintoki's like, huh, really? Are you sure about that? Hmm. I, <laughs> I don't know about that. Are you sure? Yeah, he's I don't like, know. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, he's like, eh, I don't think so. Yeah, it's a weird happenstance that my life just so happened to go down when I met you. He's like, hmm, that's weird. Couldn't be us, though. <laughs> I'm your good friend. <laughs> I like that part. I like the part when Gintoki says, I'm the main character. I can't lose. <laughs> he turns completely evil on him. And for a brief minute, he actually does like a very similar... I think in, it's in this one. He does like a very similar pose to Joseph that made me think of him. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that does... I can understand why they eventually got you to play a JoJo. It makes 100% sense here. And yeah, this episode in general is just super funny. Really good. <laughs> Nothing more to say about that one. Apparently this is also not based off anything in the manga either. It's an anime uh, exclusive. So good on Really? That. Yeah, cool. but I'm looking at to see if there was a, if it was based on a chapter, and it looks like it's not. That would make sense. That would, uh, that would explain the, all the joke, because that, that ending bit of him like complaining about the writers would not make sense if it was in manga form. <laughs> No, no, it would not. No. But all right, then that is episode 155, and then with that, I am finally cut up. Zen, can you talk to us about episode 156? I absolutely can. So episode 156, this is the one that starts with the... uh, Yeah, yeah, that's right. Elizabeth going shopping for the, the... There's two titles for this one. It's Elizabeth's first errand, and then the actual title of the episode, which is It Takes a Bit of Courage to Enter a Street Vendor Stand. So go ahead. Yeah, it's it's basically so, two. Uh, yeah. Elizabeth is uh <clears throat> going off like shopping for um shampoo. Shampoo for Katsura. Hang on. So over with uh Katsura trying to get shampoo for him because he's like, I can't go to the store because I'm uh a well-known like figure in the in the anti-foreigner faction which is really funny because he doesn't actually give a shit about that so that already is like not a thing <laughs> um and then so elizabeth goes out and basically just like goes shopping and has a bunch of weird shit happen to her while she's shopping and then she comes back and she accidentally bought conditioner instead and uh one of the funniest jokes in all of gintama i think is <laughs> she brings the conditioner back and uh, he's like, this is shitty conditioner. This is, like, not what I needed. My hair's going to get ruined. And he keeps giving these, like, longer and longer speeches, <laughs> but they only flash up on the screen for, like, half a second. So you can't read them at all. And then Elizabeth, like, goes beyond the breaking point, and she, uh, the guy in the Elizabeth costume comes out with, like, a spiked club and cracks the shit out of... Uh, Katsura and kills him, <laughs> and these little paper cutout cartoon rats just come and start like eating the body. <laughs> and then like then Elizabeth dances, does it? Does she? Yeah, Elizabeth's dancing, like happily dancing. <laughs> um, I like when that. He's, like dying. Mm, I like that bit, and I like the bit where the she because this entire part isn't like in black and white, like an old MGM movie. Um, uh, there's a part where she throws away her sign, so she's not able to communicate. And she's like, I know what to do. And then you just hear the actual full-on voice of the director. <laughs> it's like, which way is it to the store? 
that way. And then it goes back to the, the silent movies treatment. Yeah, oh, yeah, because she loses her sign, and she's like, my backup sign, I don't know what to do, and she, like, falls to her hands and knees, and then she's like, wait, I've got it, and then she just talks. <laughs> yeah, really funny. it was really funny. It's really good. Uh, yeah, so then we get into the actual episode, and it's people visiting, like, a, uh... He's like a vendor. He's like a he's like a uh, not really like a vendor. He's sort of like well, I guess kind of he's a vendor. It's, but it's a vendor that it's we not don't like a shop. We... It's like um, it's like a food stand. Yeah, it's like not. It's, go, not, it's, it's not, like not, a it's yeah. like a roadside food stand. Yeah, it's kind of like I guess the Japanese equivalent of like those dudes in New York who says like hot dogs. Yeah, like the hot dog people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you only see this entire episode from the same angle, and it's just a shot of him. Like talking to people that come into his store that you don't see. Uh, one of them is obviously Gintoki, and then the other ones come in and they talk about like uh, Mayo Samurai, and then the next one is like uh, Gori San, like Gorilla San, yeah. and then uh, Pony San, which is like supposed to be Otai. Um, and they basically all have like similar problems, where like mayo samurai is irritated at his boss because his boss keeps harassing this girl and he has to keep picking up after him because he's the serious one that actually does all the work and then the boss like comes in because gorilla san's supposed to be kondo who then comes in and he's like oh there's this girl that works at a club and i love her and all this stuff and the guy at the stand every time he's like oh mayo samurai your problem is your boss your boss fucking sucks and then the boss comes in and he's like oh hey man your problem is that girl that girl fucking sucks man and then the girl comes in who's supposed to be otai uh, but they call her Pony Son, and he's like, oh, you know what your problem is? Your problem is your little brother, your shithead little brother that you have to take care of. Because he's, he's working with, I think they call him the Smegma Samurai. <laughs> Smegma Sammy. Yeah, Smeg, Smeggy Sammy. <laughs> and um, and they're like, he's working with this guy now, and you can't, you know, he's, he's ruining everything. Um and then uh, it eventually reveals that even though it's the voice actors for these characters... And they all have, like, the exact same stories and traits of each of these characters. The only one that's actually a character that we know is Gintoki. And all the rest of them are just different people that have the exact same life and problems as the regular people from his life. It's revealed at the end that Gintoki was in a completely different story. He makes, like, a cameo at the end and go like, what is going on here? Because the person yeah, he's who... like, what the fuck? Yeah. It's really, really, really... F- it actually got me at the end, because I was like, where is this going? Because it looks like Gintoki is going to confess his love to Tai. Because the thing that the dude says is like, you know, when someone comes to bitch about something, complain, basically, <clears throat> they actually do care about them, because why else would they um, complain so much about them unless they actually kind of gave a shit about the thing that they're complaining about? Like, that's the secret sauce when it comes to this. Is that it's, is that the only reason someone would complain so much about something is that they actually care about it enough that it makes them want to say something? So the, all the time that they were talking crap about the the, the the samurai dude, you think it's them, and it looks like he's going to go say, like, hey, do you want to go out a drink? And then the fucking reveal of the faces <laughs> got me like a jump scare when they reveal it. It's, it's, not good. it's so fucking funny. Like... <laughs> I actually think this episode's a little bit genius, to be honest. Like the setup this is, is so, super good, so fucking creative and funny. It is because it really does. Like a lot of this is so focused on this dude as he's just like pouring it out, and then so much of the problems that they say are so similar. Like you said, like oh yeah, he's a Gordy son and he's a gorilla and he loves mayo. Obviously, this is the way it goes. And it's also really funny when they reveal him when they show Gordy son, he's actually a gorilla. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and my favorite part here is that it just also feels so in character, like, when he says, like, oh, yeah, his terrible gorilla boss. Well, obviously, it's unrelated to you, because it wouldn't be you, right? And then he starts crying. <laughs> Which yeah, is... he starts sobbing. <laughs> he starts sobbing. Yeah, it's 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 it really is genius. Like, this is a fantastic idea, and I was, like, fully bonding. I was like, okay, the obvious joke is that it's all them. And then when Tay shows up and she stabs Gory with a fucking leak... <laughs> Yeah, they're like, oh, there's a green onion really digging into his back. <laughs> a silent killer of some kind. Yeah, like, it must be a phantom killer. They're like, I don't know any killers that stab people with green onion. 
Yeah, and then uh, the the fucking bit at the end where he's like, "What are you planning to do, this Smegma Sammy?" <laughs> when it yeah, looks, he's like, "I understand Smegma Sammy." <laughs> It's like, how, how would you even know? And he's like, you don't understand. <laughs> I, I understand Smegma Sammy deeply. <laughs> it's really, really well done. It's it's just literally, a lot of it is being carried by the voice um, actors doing their bit. And also the right. It's oh, it's so, it's such a good, it, the, like, when you actually break it down about all the parts of it, it really is fucking fantastically well done. It, it's there's literally nothing that happens in this episode. This is a complete nothing episode. No characters that we know show up except Gintoki for like half a second. Yep. Um, and the entire thing is shown from just the same straightforward angle on this shopkeeper doing his thing. There's nothing else that's visible at all. And it's so like creative and funny and good. Like it feels fucking artsy. It, yeah, it almost it does feel like that. It, it is the clo- the same one that is talking about Smegma Sammy is also doing this extremely artsy form of a joke. I feel like a lot of other things would be a little bit afraid to kind of do something like this, where a lot of their ep- like imagine just like walking into the. It's impossible, actually. I can't imagine someone just being like, "Oh, let me try out this Gintama. It's on the TV." Switching to this channel and then this is your episode. You would be so fucking lost. Yeah, you'd have no idea what the fuck's going on. I mean, it's episode 156, so like I yeah. feel like they don't make it for you know no. that purpose. But, but th- this deep um, down, you have a deep understanding of the characters and how they are. And this yeah, plays as someone on who that. has watched the show, this episode was so good. And usually, I hate episodes that are like stupid, nothing, right? Mm-hmm. Like a lot of the times, I'll see the episodes that are like just dumb filler and be like, "This was a, such a waste of my fucking time." Uh, this is one of my favorite episodes of this series. <laughs> Yeah, it's really well done. It's like it is also it's just so fucking funny. It's also really funny just to see him kind of like move, the fu- he kind of moves around a little bit like you would expect a um <laughs> a Bethesda NPC where he's just like occasionally like going to the back and f- filling something, kind of messing with something in the front. At one point, I think he actually goes to one of the get one of the foods, and there's a fucking Justaway doll inside of it. <laughs> Yeah, he like pulls it out of the food and he's a little just away and he's like, ah. Yeah, and then he goes but, like, away. He's, he's not really doing anything. Yeah, he's just doing like the NPC loop. Yeah, he's that's what it kind of feels like. Is he just he's just here to hear these people's problems? But yeah, the, the structure of it is just super well done. The fact that the rules at the beginning, where it's like you must always pretend like you don't know the person, nothing here ever leaves here and stuff like that. Like it's set up so well, and it's executed fantastically. And it, to the point where it's even funny that like yeah, you said. And under characters, they consider this episode Kintoki as a cameo. Because <laughs> it really yeah. just kind of just yeah. show up at the end. Because he doesn't do anything. Yeah, no. he's not even present at all. He's just like, okay. And yeah, it's, it's a really well done episode. It's re- it's, if it, it's also one of those weird ones that's like, I can't just tell you to go out and watch this one. It's definitely one of the ones you have to watch. The, yeah, you have to watch the series. Yeah, this is to. one of those ones that if you don't really like, like even if you know like the character stuff, if you don't really like the show, you'll probably hate this episode because you don't care. Like you have to really like the characters and like enjoy it to like this episode. I feel like yeah, and know their interactions and stuff like that. And know yeah. how they kind of would be would next to each other. It... Damn, real good, <laughs> real good. Never would have expected it. To come off of it from this one, but yeah, they definitely hit it. Ran. Th- just imagine having this many episodes in for a comedy and still kind of being able to like show surprises like this. It's honestly kind of impressive. <laughs> yeah, I think it's great, dude. I fucking like love the shit like this when they when they do it well. It's so good, man. Yeah. I I always remember back to um, if you ever are super interested in just learning about the. The making ons of a very like of a comedy manga. I would suggest tracking tracking down Doctor Slump manga where it has Toriyama's notes, where he actually explains about like, hey, a lot of the process where he's like starts talking about like, what was I doing for this specific arc? Oh yeah, um, by this point in by halfway into it, I realized I had run out of jokes, and <laughs> that's why a lot of my jokes are kind of like, I find some poop, and I was it was like fifteen pages. And uh, that's why I just ran out of material. And then they told me, I, I, I told them, like, hey, I would like to quit because this is hard. And then they said, you're too popular. You can't quit. And I said, oh. 
<laughs> and that's the kind of thing it was like I never realized it would be so hard trying to come up with weekly new jokes. This is more than I bargained for. I ran out of poop jokes. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> and so I think about that when I think about uh, a lot of the writing when it comes to writing comedy manga. I think back to this. And I'm like, no, they still kind of got it this one in. They're still trying different stuff. And man, just well done. Also that the fact that the anime is because this is based off a chapter in the manga. The fact that they saw this chapter and they said, no, we're adapting it. That's also equal parts crazy to me. Like, to make a chapter where it's like this, yeah, I guess that kind of makes sense. You could do it in manga form. But then to actually try and adapt it into an anime, most people would just skip it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just not even bother. Yes, not even bother. This is definitely one of the ones where it feels like the people who are making this series understand the appeal of the series. And they're doing their damnedest to <laughs> meet it on its level. Whether it be through trying to do a artsy-style punchline to the end... Or just meeting it on the same level of toilet humor. They're trying their damnedest at every single step. And you gotta just commend them for it. Absolutely fantastic. Anything else to say about it, Zen? Uh, no. I mean, I just thought it was, was pretty mm. fucking rad. Hard yeah. to, like, hate, you know? Yeah, definitely. I would, I would agree. But let's move on to the next episode, which is episode 157. Any place with a bunch of men gathered around will turn into a battlefield, which is accurate. Go ahead, Zen. Uh, so this one, it starts off with them at the... Uh, there. Well, actually, technically, it starts off with like a, a host singing a song. And then it's like a thing with Suchan... Uh, and they end up saying that we're gonna have like a competition for like the greatest fan club or whatever. And Shinpachi's like, "Yes, we're gonna we're gonna win." Or when there's like a concert. Uh, uh, no, and, the, 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 and, and actually, in the beginning one here, it's actually Sue, and she talks about trying to make a. Um, uh, she tried to make an album, and then they're saying you're making your first album. She was like, "Yeah, well, the anime has a bunch of my songs, and it makes it seem like I'm always writing it, but be- all my songs get censored, so I actually can't make an album. So it makes it very tough." And then they cut the show off. <laughs> they cut the show off before she can say anything else, and then it cuts to a concert. And then at the end of the concert, that's where Shinpachi's leaving, and uh, the the uh, the basic start of the episode the the stuff about the contest doesn't come till near the end but yeah that that's that's the beginning well like after the concert he realizes that there's only four of his dudes there yeah and then he's like where uh are my fucking my fucking people like where are my guys and they're like oh they a lot of them quit and he's like how fucking dare you and he's like pissed off and he's gonna go chase him down or whatever mm-hmm. um uh, and they try to the the his like right hand man tries to stop him, and then they find the other guys, and they're all standing in this weird pose. And he's like, "What? What the fuck is going on? Like, why? What's happening?" And then um, Kijikata walks out, and it's him in his like loser persona from when he got possessed by the demon sword. Yep, Toshi. Which is, Toshi, yeah. Um, and he's like, you guys are you guys are a lame old idol group. I'm gonna be the new cool idol group, the Seuss and Gumi. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, they start like doing it like it's an old war movie where they, 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 talking they, about like the battle between them. They talk about like the warring states period, but they make it about yeah. like Otaku. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, it's. Uh, the, the real one winning this is the brilliant Toshi, who truly understands what it means to be a loser. <laughs> um, and they're like, it, it's, I think it's, it's all Gintoki narrating. It, it I think, is Gintoki's right? like, narration, yeah. yeah. And um, he goes to like try to stop the narration, and Shinpachi's like, no, I, I can't believe that we can't, that I can't beat Toshi. And, um, Eventually, the, they want to like stop it. King Toki's like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he's reading the manga, saying, "Damn, that was a crazy chapter of Gintama." <laughs> yeah, he's reading the actual Gintama manga, and I think it's like because it's him, it's Toshi and um, Shinpachi, like face to face, like staring at each other, and then it's Gintoki just reading it in like the manga form, and then Toshi ends up coming to Odd Jobs, and he's like, um. 
explaining like what his um what his goals are and why they're gonna why they're gonna fight or why he has to win. And I don't remember if he gives the speech for what why in the end of this one or the beginning of the next one. It's in the beginning of the next um, one where where they talk about like hey that that he that he gives his reasoning for it. But I think this one ends with um the the reveal that it's going there's going to be a battle to determine um who will be Otsu's official uh fan club. And that's where they say the final began begins then. And then I think that's where the episode kind of leaves off. Yeah, 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 you're right, you're right, you're right. Mm-hmm. So, um, how'd you feel about this one? Uh, it was fine. Uh, I thought the reveal that Toshi was, uh, was there was really fucking funny. Mm-hmm. Um, everything else I was kind of like, eh. Uh... That and the manga joke. I thought the manga joke was funny because Kentucky's like, I do not fucking want to be here anymore, man. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> like, really the the manga joke is really funny because it starts with him going like, "Damn, that was a crazy arc," uh, and then he then it, Shinpachi going like, "What are you talking about? What crazy arc? It's just starting." It is like if you read here at the manga part, it says you want it to be over next chapter, but it will continue. <laughs> and then as they're going, and then when um, Toji enters and they start having this another fight, he reads the manga again. He goes like. He reads it and he goes like, "End." He goes like, "Damn, I can't believe Gintama's ending." He's like, "That you know, you're just trying to actually end the show." <laughs> yeah, end the whole show because he doesn't want to do it. Anymore. He's like, "You, you just, is, are you that uninterested in our arc <laughs> that you don't want to do it?" <laughs> that was really funny. Um, I, I I I keep paying attention to it, but I swear to God that Otsu's dancing animation is purposely being made worse every single time she appears on. It, it's so funny in this one because it's literally just her head, like, like two frames back yeah. and forth. And then they cut to her fans, and they're so crazy animated. They're, yeah. like, so detailed for the little bit of it. And I'm like, this has to be on purpose. This has it's to so be. funny, though. It, it is. so bad. It does, and she's just, like, doing the same, like, motion, 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 and then when you see her, like, doing this loop, is like, not even done 100% well, and then it's just hilarious when they get, then cut to the dudes dancing, and they're just, like, so well animated in the background, and they're being shown for three seconds. I'm almost, I keep keeping track of it, because I'm like, I swear to God that they're doing this on purpose, that they are actively making her animations as, like, janky or as bad as possible, as some kind of joke on the idol thing uh, has to be, and that the there there's because everyone would want them to the the idea would be that the idol gets all the animation, but instead they've decided to one hundred percent focus it on the dudes instead, which is pretty funny. Um, I really like that when they talk about like the rules about the um, the terracotta because that they they start explaining a little bit more about the group, and one of them is that they have over a uh, hundred rules based around loving otsu and number 82 is literally you must go to every one of her concerts even if it's the day of your parents funeral sister is the exception (laughs) because the only exception is sister yeah (laughs) and i thought that was really funny it also continues the the gag of um when it comes to this club they keep having these rules where it's like no one can talk about any other girl that is not um otsu and then shimpachi immediately breaks it so i just think it's funny that one of the rules is literally an exception for just him (laughs) Just only for him, yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, when they meet Toshi again, it's really funny because they're all doing this like weird hand motion that he was doing when he first appeared. They're like holding, yeah. On of course, to- uh, they're holding onto his arm, and his head is like turned down, like all nervous looking. Yes, it also finally makes sense as to why Toshi is in the OP. Like, there's a part where um, um, Hijikata's walking, and then he like transforms in the mist, and then comes out as Toshi. <laughs> And I was yeah. like, I was like that makes sense. I like that his name is so close to the Shin Singumi. It's the Tu Singumi. Um, the Su Singumi. The Su yeah. Singumi is so close. I like that he's specifically saying you're out of touch. That the fan group should no longer be about um, just idols. It should be about everything. And when Gintoki's giving his narration about like the ninety nine clauses and about like that. It's like no one was as strong as that faction because no one had their energy, their quality, their obnoxiousness, and their lack of women. No yeah. one, <laughs> no one could go to them. 
But then when Toji actually did his faction, the first people to leave were his because of how hard in the line they were. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and in general, that animation is really funny because it is actually based off of the Warring States period with um, uh, with Shingen and Kenshin. Which, again, the only reason I know is because there was a Fago event where you get Kenshin, the dude who Kenshin is based off of. Um, oh, the ma, ma, mu, mu, Usa, Usagi Kenshin, I think is the name of them. It was during like the Sengoku period. That's the Warring States period. Um that's the only reason why I picked up on that. But even if you didn't know that, it's still really funny to dedicate this much. It hits a lot better than the um, the Nobunaga stuff did. <laughs> Just because they are actually adapting it in a way that makes it um, funnier if you don't understand it. When you see all the otakus like, fighting each other on the battlefield. <laughs> um... And yeah, I like the, the, the setup here for it. I thought I ended up liking it. I did think again a little bit in the beginning and this bit here, they, it eventually gets better as they do it more, but like the Tomosan hour, the smile is that good. Um, I, at least when I saw it at 159, 159 has my favorite version of it in there, but I at least liked it a little bit more after this first one. It feels like the first one they were like parodying something that both me and you just have no fucking clue. Like, the, the idea of, like, the morning shows in Japan culture, none of, none of us really know anything about that. <laughs> Not really. Um, I watch some Japanese shows, mainly Batsu games, but not enough for me to actually be like, oh, yeah, I know so much about this specific culture point, and isn't this exactly like that? I, I, don't, I don't get any of that. But the other stuff, it ended up starting okay for an arc that was going to be a very silly one. And, yeah, it's an interesting start. So we'll start with the next episode. And we'll continue on talking about it as I go here and click, click, and go, okay. Episode 158, if a friend gets injured, take him to the hospital. Stat. Go ahead, Zen. Tell us about it. So, okay. We go in, and he's starting to talk about what his, like, what, what his evil plan... It's not really his evil plan, but what his plan is. And it turns out that he's not really... Um, Toshi? Toshi, he's actually Hitsugaya. Um, Hijikata. And Hijikata. Oh, my God. Bleach brain rot. Yeah, it's uh, all right. <laughs> he's actually uh, Hijikata. And he reveals that, like, the, the spirit of Toshi is, like, still in him. And they have like a Naruto scene where he's talking to him like in a in a spirit in a, jail. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad we both picked up on the Naruto stuff because yeah, like the drama in the prison inside yeah. of Naruto. Um, and he's like, I wanna, I want to, uh, I want to just be remembered before I'm gone. Like, I want to live. And so uh, Hichikata's like, All right, then you know what? I'm gonna win this competition for you. Um, and that way. I can make your name known. Like, I'm going to carve the proof of your existence in otaku history, and then you can die and get out of my body. <laughs> um, they all end up at the contest, and there's, like, a shitload of people. There's, like, thousands of people there. Um, Gintoki is trying to get people to drop out because he got them all the help. And they end up uh, going up on TV and saying, like, some horrible fucked up shit. <laughs> and they're like oh my god like they're zooming in on all their faces and stuff the, the things they say here we'll talk about it later bro. oh my god yeah and then um it's like a foot race and then gintoki tries to, to take like a cab he's like i don't want to run i'm gonna just take a car um and then the the sidekick i don't remember his name he's the guy with like the stereotypical uh top tapu, of the door, yeah, he's the guy who has, like, the Kuwabara hair. Yeah. Uh, he gets hit by a car, and they're just looking at him on the floor, and they're like, his hair just keeps bouncing. And it's, like, <laughs> bouncing around, and then it ends. The episode just ends. Yeah, the, they realize that they can't take him to um, the hospital, because um, that would count as being disqualified. And if any member gets disqualified, then they're just basically out of it. 
So I think it ends with them like Yamazaki, like they're carrying him around like it's weekend at Bernie's, and then they run into Yamazaki, and that's where it ends because <laughs> Yamazaki's wearing the same Toshi gear as everyone else. Oh yeah, because because um, wait, is this the one where they reveal that Kondo is there too? No, that's next episode. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, that's the next episode for sure. But yeah, th- this ends with Yamazaki. That was the first hint that there's other people, obviously other than Okita, who had the same um outfit. Next one, they they show um, Yamazaki at the end, and that's where it kind of ends off. Uh, so yeah, this episode. Um, first of all, the morning bit here, where they're trying to interview Sadaharu. Uh, it's also really funny to see the return of the the depressed centaur man, as the depressed centaur man was for some reason on this talk show, <laughs> and he says like, "Let me introduce you to Sadaharu," and Sadaharu comes in, and the dude who is doing the announcer, he's like, uh, "This has to be some kind of like tensai. He has to be a genius dog. Like, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna finally break out of here as soon as this dog just understands my human speech." And he goes to say like, he goes to do like a joke, and Sadaharu immediately eats his head. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like such a long build up to it. He's like, oh, and then it ends. Oh, in terms of the actual episode here, I like the beginning here where they're talking about Toshi and they're doing the Naruto bit. <laughs> it is really funny to see him, like, in a cage, and he's like, when he was in the cage, his resentment only grew. <laughs> he, he kept growing. And every single time, he's like, do you know how annoying it is that you build a shelf and then you're looking ready to um, fill that shelf off with something else and you notice it's already been filled up with DVDs? <laughs> Because that's what's happening to me. I, uh, some random guy popped up and I had like a two hour discussion about Evangelion, which they call here um, Evangelion as a parody of Evangelion. And when they start talking about Evangelion, they play like live action stuff in the background <laughs> as they're talking about it, um, which I thought was funny. Uh, the other bit, <clears throat> obviously, when they're piping up the, the dudes and they're like, Who's ready to be Otsu's number one fan? Yeah. You guys ready to do anything? Yeah. And then Kentucky says like, are you ready to eat her shit? (laughs) (laughs) And everyone goes like, yeah, yeah. And then (laughs) they do probably the funniest hype up job I've ever seen. Where he's like, my guy here, a shit pachi, he could eat eight plates of that shit. (laughs) (laughs) Are you kidding me? You're not on his level. You're not like my guy. And then they cut to one of the Itagas in the crowd. He goes like, eight plates of shit. You know, I would imagine one would be enough, but eight plates, I can't compete with eight plates, man. (laughs) I'm out of here. He fucking leaves. And then the other great bit is that Kagura then with a bunch of plates goes to Atsu. He's like, whenever you're ready. (laughs) (laughs) And then they kick him out, and they go like, "Never do that again." If you do that again, you're gonna be disqualified. And then <laughs> it's like, I guess okay, there's no gonna, no one's gonna be eating her shit for over any part of it. But that was a really funny bit where they're just like going around because they're just being so graphic about it. It was like, "You're all gonna eat it." And then someone says like, "Obviously, she doesn't fart or shit. She can't do that. She's an idol." And then Gintoki says like, "If you truly loved her, you would accept all parts of her, including the disgusting parts like farting and shitting." <laughs> You're not real. Not like my guy here, Shinpachi. <laughs> he can handle it no matter what. Uh, that was great. I also really liked the bit when um, the dude gets run over. Because they, I feel like they do the exact same thing as when Elizabeth got hit by a car. <laughs> it feels like very similar. Like, he gets hit and then he spins like five times in the air. And then lands. <laughs> um... But yeah, it was. Uh, I ended up liking it. I thought it was pretty funny. I'm a big fan of loudly declaring who's ready to eat this shit. <laughs> My guy can do it. <laughs> it is, really is the hype up job. The way he just hypes up Shinpachi say like, you guys aren't on his level. <laughs> you can't do what he's ready to do to show his love. It also you goes, can't commit like this. No, you can't commit. It also goes back to um, last episode where Gen- uh, Kentucky was saying that he didn't understand the hype behind being in, being like a fan in a fan club for an idol because he's like, it's not like you're gonna f- like have sex with her at the end, right? It's like I just want to make it very clear here that no matter what you're doing, this woman is not gonna be with you. I don't know what you think that this is gonna end up with, but I need you to understand that's not gonna how it's gonna be. And then it just completely goes ignored. <laughs> 
<laughs> no one pays attention about what he has to say about it, but it goes back to him just like having a clear disrespect <laughs> towards the entire act of this, and it's really funny. I also really like when Otsu when they get everything back to normal. Um, she's clearly embarrassed about the entire thing because she's just been told by everyone, "Hey, get ready to t- to take a shit on a bunch of plates, girl." <laughs> uh, 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 uh. It's like n- no. Please, it, 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 funny enough, humanize her because of all the things she says, like uh, deaf taco and stuff like that, and all the lyrics mm-hmm. in her songs. It actually was a very like real moment of like, okay, she has some form of like actual humility, because if I was told in front of a stage of that many people, get ready to <laughs> to eat her, <laughs> eat her shit, I would probably feel that level of embarrassed. So it was just kind of nice to see. It's like, oh no, she would, she is not okay with this either. <laughs> she was, it was put in a very weird position. But anyway, I thought it was funny. What'd you think, Zen? I thought it was good. Yeah, a lot of the same thoughts as the last one. It was kind of just like I'm not really feeling this arc too much because I'm just kinda, like I don't really care about Atsu. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, she shows up once every hundred episodes. It's like, oh, eh. but uh, I do think the Toshi bit is funny, and I thought the um, Gintoki like not really giving a shit, but also not wanting to lose. <laughs> Well, it's funny. Yeah, because he wants that Cause money. Because he only gave a shit. Yeah, because he wants the money. Uh, yeah. But and then um, the the bit with Kagura, yeah, where she's like, "Here you go, <laughs> ready fill whenever you are." <laughs> yeah, fill him up. Fill him up. They gave her so many plates too. <laughs> it was uh, it was a very well done toilet humor on this one. Um, yeah, that's what I'm feeling. I think it actually was pretty smart to put it with uh, Otsu. I think the last time we had something Otsu focused, um, where I thought it was actually really good, it was actually when it was paired up with the Shinsen Gumi. When they did the whole thing about like her hanging out with them to try and improve their messaging and stuff like that. I thought that was some of the better bits. So I definitely feel like when... Because a lot of, again, a lot of the time when it comes to Otsu, a lot of her jokes are... Uh, I say really weird things like suicide dive and I make songs and also her animations get progressively worse every time you see her in concert. <laughs> um, so it's a little bit limited about what you can do with her, but actually putting them with the Shinsen Gumi so she doesn't have to carry the entire arc herself while just kind of being there to do like her cutesy bit stuff. I think it ends up making a lot more sense than actually going. Yeah, the, the Shinsen Gumi was the funniest fuck yeah, I've, thing I've, I've, in yeah. general. Yeah. So it's 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 a it's a good pairing, I would say, and at least in this one, it gets a, an excuse to get the full otaku version of him out as well, which is funny. Also, apparently, the Owen otaku is stylized in katakana, whoa, to avoid paying royalties. I didn't know someone owned it. It's standard practice in a lot of animes. I didn't know someone just owns otaku. That's crazy. Who the fuck owns otaku? What the word? Apparently, so it's copyrighted. I was reading here in the oh. trivia, yeah, the O and Otaku is stylized oh. at a katakana wo. They do this to avoid paying, having to pay royalties. It's standard practice in a lot of the animes. Who owns Otaku? That's a question, you know, maybe I'll figure it out later. I mean, hopefully someone actually knows. I know there's someone here that was super dedicated that will answer this for me, and I will say it next week <laughs> if, if you give me the answer. So there we go. That's that episode. Let's move on to episode 159, which is the final one for uh, this episode of Shonen Archive, and we'll finish off the arc next time we come back. The English title is, If One Orange is in the Box is Rotten, the rest of them will become rotten before you realize it. Go ahead. Zen. Uh, so yeah, this is the one where we reveal that Kondo is in the race as well, because they're, they, they're like all trying to help Hichikata so they can free his soul. From the fucking, uh, from Toshi. Mm -hmm. Um, they decide that they need to replace Takachin, because he's, um... He's knocked out. They think he's actually dead. Because, like, um, they're trying to make it clear to Yamazaki that he's not injured, and then <laughs> they have, like, the Grim Reaper and an angel and someone dog is, like, biting into him because, <laughs> like, he's a dead corpse. Is that uh, Yeah, and he's, like, they're, like, dragging trash and stuff along with him. Uh, and they're, like, all right, we need to we need to do something with this. So they drop him in the hospital. And he ends up getting a lookalike that doesn't look he's like soup. He looks like Hulk Hogan. <laughs> like, huge. He, he looks exactly like Hulk Hogan. 
<laughs> he's got the bandana and he's like huge. Like it's him. It's the guy. It looks exactly um, like him. It looks exactly like him. Um, and Yamazaki's like, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let you, and then they, they like hey, fuck you. We're gonna we're gonna do it. Yeah, because um, he says, "Do you want to know who injured him in the first place?" Because <laughs> it was then, a, uh, yeah. Then uh, Shinpachi's like running ahead, and Toshi's like, "Quick, everyone, make a wall!" And they like link arms, and he's like, "Ah, oh, I can't get through." He's like laying on the floor, like beat up, and. Um, they, they tell Shimpachi, like, just give it up. And then he does, like, this dramatic leap and starts running along the bridge railing. Uh, but then Gintoki and the new guy end up blowing up the bridge. They're, I don't even know what they're doing. They're, like, patty caking or something. He hits um, it with, like, the French bread. Well, no, like, at the end where they're, like, they're, like, slapping hands. Or oh, they're, yeah, like, yeah. doing a handshake forever. Um, and the bridge collapses and everyone, including their team, plummets into the river yeah and then yeah that's where we ended off for so far um this episode was also pretty funny i really like the bit here with this hulk hogan looking guy because he they because uh gintoki says to shinfachi don't worry i'll get him in the hospital and then i swear to you i'll come back with him and so he tells Shinpachi to run ahead, and then when he comes back, and Yama's like, he's like, he's back, what? And then they see that it is this fucking Hulk Hogan-looking dude. He's like, and, he, and then he tries to say, he's like, oh yeah, we, um, they try to say that the reason it was like this is because they circumcised his penis. And then he's like, you know, when you do that, I hear that you become a man. And he's like, there's no way for you to have this style of growing up <laughs> by just chipping it away. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. And then the guy goes, okay, hour, uh, one, two, hour, 20,000 yen. And then uh, Gintoki goes like, okay, okay, uh, hour, three hour, four hour French bread. Okay? He goes, okay. <laughs> so basically he's paying pay 20,000 yen to pretend to be him. And then from any hour before him, he's just being paid in French bread. <laughs> Which is apparently also the French bread is a pun on the other dude's name. Um, which is why he's carrying it. And, Cause apparently his hair could also be, um, stylized as French bread. And he's like, well, you should have at least put it on his head. Cause then at least that would make sense. But all you've done is given him French bread to put in his arms. And then he also starts using it as a weapon, like against Yamazaki, he fucking belts him with it. And then, um, at the bridge, when he's showing up again, he uses it to take out the bridge. It's also really funny when Gintoki says like, we're here. And then Shinpachi's like, oh my god, it's you guys. And then he goes looking and he sees that uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Taka, Takachin has been replaced by someone who goes by the name of Takatin. That's what he keeps calling. He's like, I, Takatin. Oh yeah, Takatin. Yeah, I'm Takatin. And he goes like, what is that? And he's like, where's Takachin? <laughs> and then Takatin is like, oh, and they destroy the bridge, which is really funny. Um, and they start celebrating with each other. Um... Yeah, that's really good. I like the bit with Kondo where he starts racing Kagura and the the reason that they're in trouble is that Kagura and Kondo have actually gone out of the path. So they're basically out of the competition because they don't know where the fuck they are. <laughs> they're just running the run. Um, That's pretty good. And yeah, I really like the, the bit with Toshi where he reveals like, the, I don't know what you thought this was, but this is not... Um, a thousand versus one this is actually uh everyone here is like it's not a thousand people going against each other it's every single person versus you everyone here is in my faction you don't have anyone here on your side um which i thought was a cool reveal they even play like the dramatic arc music for when he's when he makes this revelation which is really funny <laughs> that <Yeah. laughs> it <Shh. laughs> <laughs> which is really funny um, I like, I like Shinpachi eventually realizing that he could just go on top of the, the bridge and run it, which is pretty fun. Uh, he seems to really care about wanting to be the number one, which is pretty all right. Um, and just the idea that it seems like he's the only one that actually legitimately cares about this based off of the way Gintoki's acting. And he, I also like the idea that I think, I think it's implied that I think it's going to be revealed. We don't know because we haven't seen it yet, but I'm almost positive Gintoki just kind of 
dumped Takachan to the side in a dumpster or something and took his clothes and gave it to this guy. <laughs> Yeah, because he said, like, I'm going to take him to the hospital. I don't think he did. There's no, no. way that he did, right? Because the hospital that he goes to was a cosmologist. That's where he's. That's why he said, like, oh, yeah, no, he had he got work done there. And they <laughs> chopped off his penis. <laughs> they, they circumcised him. They circumcised him, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, we're good here. And he's like, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> what are you trying to do here? This is clearly you guys are cheating. Um, so we'll see how this kind of goes from there. But, you know, I enjoyed it. It was a fun little time. Uh, and I kind of want to see where it goes. There's only, like, uh, actually there's a decent bit left in this arc, if I remember right. Let me double check here. I think there might be three episodes left, maybe? This episode ends at 163, so there's three more episodes after this one. Four more episodes, actually. So we will cover the rest of it for, for next time. Uh, and yeah, what'd you feel about it, Zen? It was good. It was funny. Um, it's probably the funniest one of the three so far. That it was. It was the one that got the most laughs out of me. With the mm. the Takatin joke was fucking funny. Um, I also like Yamazaki, like not really being into it. He's like, yeah, we're just you know, we're kind of <laughs> here. But then when they start cheating, he like gets into it. <laughs> He's like, wait a minute, you can't fucking cheat. Um, damn cheat! Can't fucking cheat. But yeah, it was it was fine. Yeah, <laughs> it was fine. it's enjoyable. Just kind of some silly stuff. It's a little bit weird because it's like obviously in the in the middle of an arc, so obviously it's pushing an arc forward. So all you can really say is like, oh yeah, some silly stuff happens and it's funny. There we go. That's good enough. Um, and that's where we'll be we leaving it off for now. And uh, like I said, next week we hope to cover. Episode 160, 161, 162, 163, um, and I think that's already 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, yeah, I think we'll go for, one. we'll stop at 164, because I realize, uh, we might have to go to actually 165, because the next, there is another arc that's coming up that is four episodes long, and that's Tama Quest. So it might be better just to watch to 165 and get it. So the one that we were supposed to cover, which is episode 160, 161, 162, 163, 164, 165, and then we should be good. And then then the week after that, it should be 166, 167, 168, 169, 170. And then from there, it looks like it's going to be pretty normal. Yeah, we got some normal batches of episodes. And then... It looks like we actually hit one of the big arcs. And this is the one where we probably have to put some side to stuff aside, which is going to be the red. I think that's what I've been told is that the red spider arc is the next pretty big one. The so next I'll, like, big one? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'll I'll look at to I'll look to the list that's uh, one of our listeners gave me. So just to be double checking and stuff like that and just to make sure that we hit the right uh, episode notes because someone actually did break it down for us like fully from till the end of basically gintama i think it says like if you're looking for just specifically what are likely be the best parts that's also why we stopped right here because they're like eh, it's fine you can stop right here and it's not gonna be a big deal and i think that's actually right it's i don't <laughs> i don't see it being that big of a deal we should remember by the next time we come back here because it's not like that kind of arc that would require us to watch every single one of the episodes in one go at least so there we go. Yeah, it's not that intense. No, no, it's very much more of a lighthearted, like, hey, let's just go. So there's no reason for us to go that crazy hard for it. <laughs> yeah, no no need. Yeah, good good, good call on that one. But yeah, that's it for Shonen Archive this week. So let's go into my favorite segment, which is it's time to try and end the show. As always, <laughs> you can find Zen over on Zen's channel, where he does Shonen and Chill. I've also re- I also remembered to leave your Twitch, so there you go. You can go over to Zen's Twitch and wait for him to start twitching it up in there. Same, <laughs> you can also technically do the same for me. I'll get back to it someday as soon as my um, work gives me a, a break in some instances. It's funny because my work doesn't give me a break, and then at the same time, stuff is down because of the stupid strike going on in Hollywood. So it's definitely a feeling of, like, I should be making more money, but also, why am I still busy? <laughs> this doesn't make yeah, sense. that sucks. 
That's unfortunate. Yeah. It's, it, it, my one department is the one department where it's like, actually, it's fairly active compared to everything else. And I'm like, well, zippity doo da. That's great for me. And then they're like, well, now we have to actually specifically cut it in a way. And I'm like, oh, that's. Uh, mm, now you're making my job harder. If I just kept doing it the way I was beforehand, it'd be a little different, but whatever. I understand things are a little bit. Eh currently going on in the hollywood pay them motherfuckers that's my main thing here studios do your fucking job stop losing 200 million dollars you dumbasses just give people their goddamn money anyway, yeah just pay them for fuck's sake just pay them for oh my fucking god please i need this also i need them to all get ready to start making one piece season two and we can't do that shit until you guys get this shit fixed they're only ever gonna make it to like three seasons because at some point they're gonna run out of money and hopefully One Piece is going to be the thing that eventually kills Netflix because of how much uh, millions of dollars an episode takes. Because if 188... Yeah, I imagine it's extremely expensive to yeah, make that. $188 million per episode. Jesus. Ten episodes All for One Piece. Season. All for One Piece. And they, they only just adapted the easiest arc to adapt. Which is up till Logue Town. Like, Logue Town is looking where it's going to... Spoilers for the One Piece live action. But Logue Town is look, looking where it would be where Season 2 picks up. Um, and that's where a lot of the, the crazier, like, devil fruits start happening. And stuff like that. So good luck with that one. <laughs> we'll see if we make it past Season 2 <laughs> based off the budget. Not looking good. But anyway, if you want some more me stuff, you can go to my channel here. I occasionally do other things. I try and do um, other things when I remember to. Uh, sometimes a Marvel Snap video here and there. Um, really, all I need to get back to Paper Mario because I promised my two biggest fans, which are Vio and another friend of ours, another goalie who shows up on for for um, Thirteen Nights of Halloween. <laughs> one of the the ghost fuckers. One of the teams on there. Uh, they're big fans of Paper Mario to the point where, for a brief minute, uh, one of the Paper Mario parts made it to like a dollar in funding, and was one of the top my top earning videos back in the day. I was like, "Well, how the fuck did this happen? It only has 16 views." And then I learned it's because I didn't. Uh, it was like it was like stupid long. I think it was like an hour long video, but I forgot to set it to have ads so that it was. It, enjoyable to watch like i usually go in, into youtube and say like hey don't put fifty thousand ads so that people can actually just enjoy the video i usually have to manually go in there and change it but for that one i forgot to and they just watched it all <laughs> and they made so <laughs> i was like oh god if you had told me i would have removed them and he's like no it's fine i have youtube bread I just that's just free money for you when i'm watching and i was like oh never mind then let me just get back to this so they begged me on vegas to continue so i'm gonna try and keep continuing that but other than that for go summon video should be up on wednesday and hopefully uh show archive should be here on saturday for when you see it but yeah that's about it everyone thank you very much for watching um we will see you guys next week for morgan tama hopefully jujutsu kaisen and Praying to God, Kuroko, because I really do want to get back into Kuroko, because I was very interested when yeah, I Yeah, we have it. not been doing that one much. No, the don't... curse of having a, an active season going. Yeah, the curse of having an active season going, and then for some reason my work, like, work literally... Like, in the middle of this recording, people looking for me for work, because today, this Saturday, today, Wednesday is going to be the hardest day for, uh, for us. <laughs> it was never like this beforehand, and then all of a sudden they decided to do it, so... Fun time. But that's the end of Shonen Archive for this week, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, we'll see you guys later. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Adios.